Hey everyone! Uh, today's video is part of the Makers Creative Collab video hop hosted by PM Artist Studios. And this month's theme is Striking Sticks. And I decided that I wanted my sticks to be paper tubes. Fortunately, they allow us to, um, you know, interpret as we will. And I just, I wanted to use paper tubes to make something. I don't know exactly what. We're, we're literally making this up as we go. I'm thinking that I want to do something kind of like this. This is one of my, like, favorite things that I've made ever. And it was done with paper tubes. And, or maybe this. This was done kind of in a similar way. But, um, I painted it and it's a little bit different. But again, paper tubes. So I think I'll just start uh, making tubes and then we'll hope that by the end of it they'll turn themselves into something fun. Now to make the tubes you're going to need a magazine or paper of some kind. I don't know. I use a magazine and I tend to use fashion magazines because they have pretty decent paper in them. I mean it really doesn't matter but just to get good solid tubes um, kind of these glossy magazine pages work really well. I cut them down into the size that I want. This this will be the height of my tube and these ended up being about three and a half inches. And then I go through and magazines have different papers, you know, even in the same magazine. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know how the perfume ads are always just a little heavier and glossier than the rest of the pages. Okay, I go through and I pull those out. And I'll use them. I'll use them for paper beads. I don't like to use them for this unless I have a whole bunch of them because the weight of your paper and the length of it are going to determine how big your tube ends up being. Now, you're going to need a something to roll your tubes with. I tend to use either a dowel or a skewer. I've used... Um, knitting needles. You just need something shaped kind of like this. And I just take my strip and I'm going to put my little skewer down here. And then I just kind of do this back and forth just so that the paper knows what I want it to do. And then just kind of hope that it's straight and roll it. And see, this is going to happen. You can see right there, it's not exactly even. I just kind of straighten it and keep going. Don't worry too much about that because we're going to pull this off at the end. But you'll see that, okay, once you get it rolled up, now this part that I chose to be at the end there, it's what's going to mostly show. So that's why you kind of want to pay attention to, to that part that you put face down at the top if you roll this way. Now I'm going to pull this off and then kind of make sure that my ends are flush. Okay, really if you don't cut your strips precisely the exact same width, your ends might get a little funny and you know they're not going to be as smooth and as even for some projects that's going to be an issue, for others it's not. So you just kind of have to decide, you know, how much time and care you want to take in making sure that all of your strips are exactly the same size. Mine are pretty much kind of sort of the same size, but they're not exact. And that's okay. They're going to be fine for this project. Now, you just want to glue that together, and this is another reason why the um, heavier papers, you know, those heavy coated ones are a problem here, because they don't really glue down as quick and easy with a glue stick, and it's just, you either have to use a wet glue, which is messier, or a lot more glue stick, and it just increases my margin for error, put it that way. And you can glue it down with whatever you want. I find a glue stick is the least messy, 
I'm using this Elmer's washable school glue. It really doesn't take much and I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna, at the end of it, these are gonna be glued together with like a lot of glue. <laughs> And then they're probably going to be sealed. I may or may not paint them. So, yeah, I just need something to hold that together good enough. Doesn't have to be, you know, super strong glue. Now, you're just going to want to keep going until you have about a bajillion of these. I, I don't even know exactly how many we're going to need because I don't know what we're making. So, I'm just going to probably sit in front of the TV and mindlessly roll me a bunch of these tubes the same size until I've gone through pretty much my whole magazine. Now at the end of it, if I make a lid, I'm going to need some tubes of different sizes, you know, other than this. But I have a couple more magazines with the same kind of paper that I can use, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to make up a bunch of these and then we'll come back and assemble this into a something. Now it's time to start building our box. And this is not difficult at all. Um, you already did the hard part. You rolled your bajillion paper tubes. So what I do is take a piece of chipboard or cardboard or a cereal box or whatever and the same length as my tubes. I start by, you know, figure out whatever width I want it and then just glue the tubes to the chipboard. And I like having, this just makes a nice base to start with and keeps everything straight. You do wanna pay attention as you're going to keep things straight. Then I just build my walls in sections and just like this. And I like to use a, like a good sticky PVA glue, like maybe uh, tacky glue or right now I'm using this reptile glue and these like grab hold really fast uh, but they dry clear and it, it's PVA so they're strong and they dry clear but I like that you know this kind grabs hold really fast so I just run a little bit of glue along here and glue these little sections together just like that Pay attention as I'm going so that they stay level and you know I don't want my walls to be walking well, not my walls but my sides but you know I call them walls because I feel like I'm I'm building I'm constructing here so this is gonna go here and usually for putting these together just this initial you know assembly thing I'll use hot glue and I like that because if one of my walls <laughs> is a little bit wonky you know or it's leaning it's it's not straight up and down I can just reheat that hot glue to melt it and then I make adjustments so yeah I like that for that so what I'll do this goes here and when you put these together you're going to leave a little space on your corners just enough for about one tube so I'll put all of my walls together and then I will take another tube put in like this and finish that corner off and it'll look you know complete and like you just measured perfectly but yeah that's the easy way to do it so take this this panel put a little hot glue down here really just enough to to hold it and let that set up kind of make sure that my corner gaps are about even and we'll hold about one tube and there we have it and then I did go ahead and just run some more glue around the uh, inside around the edge on the insides just so that everything is sealed nicely so I'll do that here and then we're going to start the construction of our lid and I have to tell you I fumble through this every single time and somehow it 
it always manages to turn out. <laughs> but there's really no rhyme or reason for it. There kind of is. I make another panel, you know, just like I did for my sides. But it's going to have to be a little bit longer and a little bit wider. Now I could just, you know, use wider um, tubes to begin with. But you're still going to have to do some piecing. And yeah, I, I, this is just the how I do it. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. This is just what I do. And so I've got, this is just basically one of these uh, sides of the box. I think I added maybe one more tube because it needs to be longer. And then I just eyeball it. I can see if I add, oh, probably two more tubes, it'll be exactly the same length as this, but it needs to be more than exactly. So I might add three or four more tubes. And then I'm going to roll some longer ones to go on either end. And then you just come around the sides and start doing like this. I know, this, this is not really exact, and I, I don't really have uh, time in this video to show you exact, but I'm going to try to do another video and slow this down so you can see exactly how it's done. But really, if you just... Yeah, just add tubes and make them longer when they need to be longer <laughs> and stack them when they need to be stacked. It'll work. It'll work. It's fine. And then for the top, you can do pretty much anything. I'll give you a quick how-to to, for uh, something similar to this when we come back. So I have finished my um, paper stick, sort of. <laughs> project and it came out really well I, I'm really happy with how it turned out I decided to do something a little different for the knob I just used some these are some saucer beads paper beads that I've made and I just strung them on a string pulled it through tied a knot much easier than that whole complicated other thing that I did um, there's still a little wet glue on there holding them down and uh, once that dries then that'll be nice and firm and I muddled my way through the whole lid construction and managed to come up with a workable lid. I'm probably going to seal this with either some polycrylic or maybe a spray sealer. I haven't decided yet but um, this is just a super easy, cool way to uh, use some magazines or scrapbook papers or other papers in a, a little bit different way and make something usable out of them. Christmas is coming, y'all. These would be really cute gifts. Just saying. So, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Mariah, for inviting me to be a part of your hop. Uh, what you'll do next is go to the next video in the hop, and you can do that by clicking the link that's on the um, last screen of this video, or you can just go down to my video description, and then the links for all of the videos in the hop will be there, and then there's other helpful links too. So um, thank you again for watching. Watch the next video. Until next time. The end.